We're in the process of converting the car behind me from normal gasoline over to E85, or ethanol. I figured how cool would it be to show you what happens when you put E85 into a car that's not meant to run it. Yep, hang on. Maybe you're one of my subscribers and know that E85 is a performance enhancer, or maybe you're somebody that goes to the pump prior to this insane crash and sees that E85 is cheaper than regular gas and figure, what the heck, it'll work, it's all fuel. If you put ethanol into this vehicle right now and run it, it will run. There's nothing particularly special about what ethanol is as it goes into your engine. It uses the normal spark plug, the normal engine, and it will fire. That's the deceiving part about it. There are two major problems that occur if you put E85 into a vehicle that it's not meant for. Those problems are divided into short and long term. The long term problems make sense. E85 is an alcohol. It is very corrosive. It's very dangerous to use that on a vehicle that's not designed with the correct hoses, the correct pumps, the correct injectors. It'll gum them up. It'll cause problems. It'll eat through certain seals, plastics, and whatnot. You have to have your whole fuel system capable of handling the fuel itself. I doubt you would make it that long if you put ethanol into this car. So you can see it's pretty, uh, oh, it's running really lean. Okay. okay. This car is equipped with a lot of technology that will allow us to watch what happens as you put ethanol into the car. A normal car will not be able to adjust for the different fuel because it won't know there's different fuel into the car. Fortunately, we live in an age of technology where there are two really awesome tools that are commonly available now to convert a car to E85. And this is why I love the modern aftermarket world. This is a flex fuel sensor. In this case, it's made by AEM. It's a wonderful product. I have one installed on this car right down there. This is capable of determining the amount of ethanol in your fuel mixture. You'll be surprised to find that regular fuel actually has a percentage of ethanol in it. I measured it on this car prior to all this video filming and found that it had 8.8% ethanol in its normal gasoline. If the little flex fuel sensor is cheat modes, then this is God mode. This is completely unfair because it comes in its own container. One ethanol is one of the multiple providers of race type ethanol, this is guaranteed to be E85. This is guaranteed that if I go and put this into my vehicle right now, I will have 85% ethanol and the rest, the other 15% will not be junk fuel. Unlike the pump E85, even if they both have exactly the same amount of ethanol, the other 15% of this stuff is filled with quality ingredients. The pump ethanol, on the other hand, will have additives including 40 octane fuel and, and other kind of crude fuel that fills the rest of it up. The end all be all is using a product like this, one ethanol's R, where it is filled to the max with ethanol. The rest of it is just additives to help a race car make horsepower. The other piece to this equation is this. It's a wide band oxygen sensor. And as its name implies, it measures the amount of oxygen left over after the engine does its business. Let's talk a little bit about why anybody goes to E85 to begin with. It's two very remarkable qualities that really make it superior to gasoline for the performance industry, of course. One is it is more stable. And without getting into the chemistry of it all, cars make more power the more aggressive the timing is on them. And one of the biggest drawbacks to using pump gas is that you don't know what is in it. When you go to fire your engine, you tend to delay it a little bit. You'll hear people say retard the timing. De basically, you're delaying the spark from occurring at the most powerful spot to produce the most amount of power. That's a safety. That's like an insurance. You're buying insurance preventing the explosion from happening too soon. Ethanol allows you to get closer to the peak amount of timing, not straight to it, nobody does that unless you're crazy, but it gets closer to the peak timing, allowing you to make more torque and more power. The other major benefit of ethanol is its cooling abilities. It runs colder. And the reason for that is it requires more fuel per the unit of air to make power. When you use E85 in your vehicle, no matter what power you're making, it will always consume 30% more fuel. And that has to do with air to fuel ratio. There's oxygen in the air and there's fuel that works with the oxygen to make power. If there's too much oxygen left over, that means you didn't have enough fuel. And that's called a lean situation. That's bad because that will get very, very hot. We'll learn about that in a second. 
On gasoline, for example, for every unit of fuel, you need 14.5 units of air to make the perfect mixture. And on ethanol, it's closer to nine to one. So again, a 30% increase in the amount of fuel to air to just make the ideal combustion. That really does sound like a negative, and of course, if you're at the pump a lot, that is a negative, but the positive strongly outweighs that. If you watched my four-rotor dyno, you saw my intake manifold condensating and getting so cold, it was cold to the touch. E85 does a phenomenal job at reducing intake temperatures. I put that camera onto a tripod so you guys can watch these numbers change as I fill this up with ethanol. Lambda is a ratio of air to fuel. So if it says 0.8, that means that it is running rich. And if it's running over one, which is what I'm expecting to see here shortly, over one means that there is way more oxygen left over, meaning we didn't use enough fuel. So the top one makes perfect sense. As I was expecting, 8.9% ethanol inside of normal gasoline. It changes and it varies. That's not a big deal. Lambda, on the other hand, see how it says five? That means it's extremely lean, which makes sense. The car hasn't been running for a day. That means that there's only oxygen, only air inside of the exhaust. Lambda will then come in line with as the car starts idling. I expect that to get very close to 0.95, meaning it's close to a perfect mix. I'm gonna fire up the car first to watch 5.4 change to close to hopefully one. see both of these numbers start to rise. There we go. Both, both numbers, I don't know how long the camera was off, but both numbers have risen up. It's not dangerous, at least right now, for idling. You can idle at this point. That's why I wasn't too worried about this. The car is idling higher, and we're up to 40% ethanol. I can actually smell the lean mixture, but we're gonna go ahead and tell us, hey, to calculate it based. Yep, hang on. Yeah, I know, I know. I tried doing this real time and, and as a result, of course, things don't always go because I didn't have the map ready for that. Uh, but that's what would happen if, if you did this exact same thing and switched it to E85 mix uh, without doing this ahead of time, you know, the car would stall out too. This is such a critical part of the process is that even though you're tuning your engine, the ECU still has expectations of what's supposed to happen. So when we say target lambda, which you see right at the center there, the ECU wants to know what it's expecting partially for safety, partially for tuning. You can actually turn it into a closed loop tuning mode and have the computer try to get to these numbers. You can see all these numbers are what the oxygen sensor should be reading. And the very top idling and the very bottom is making tons of power. So at the very top, you see that they're all close to one. That's very safe. The car isn't gonna have a problem. That's why I put the ethanol in to begin with, with the car idling. So I've got that in there now. With that map set up, you can see she's already pretty happy, that's how smart this ECU is. So based on those two maps, the top one being more for gasoline, the bottom one being for E85, and then something like this right now would be halfway between the two, so keep that in mind. Even with an aftermarket computer, I still had to set it up to expect ethanol and to adjust for it. If you had a stock computer or even didn't tune this computer like I didn't ahead of time, it causes you problems. Again, even just idling, you're allowed to go a little lean, but it, had you done that and then tried racing somebody, you would have blown your motor. You would have detonated the motor. If you're gonna take on installing a flex fuel sensor and a wideband O2 sensor, be smarter than me and make sure you do it closer to the outdoors. The problem with imperfect fuel mixtures is that the fumes can get overwhelming and that's why I'm filming the end of this video out here. 
you can see it's pretty, uh, oh, it's running really lean. Okay. okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and show you just how much that affects everything. She already sounds amazing. She's running nice and cool. Get it to first gear. Well, the beginning of this video is more of a generic video. This half is more of the story of this car and getting this thing on E85 is the first step to getting it on the dyno, which is I think the second step. <laughs> this might finally be an outro for me for once. Continue working on the base map now that I have E85 in here. In the next three days, get her on the dyno.